hear your deep earth shattering philosophical questions. Oh, in that case, you better get another question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dale, carry on. <laughs> 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 Beloved Guruji, we're told to avoid expectation but find this difficult to do. What is the difference between planning and expectation? You could not go on a tour without some planning. If expectations are living in the future, are not affirmations and manifesting also living in the future? If our thoughts create the future, what effect do our expectations have on it? If we do not have expecting thoughts, would that not leave the creation of the future up to those who do? Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Now, may I ask one question? Do you expect me to answer your question? <laughs> Good, fine. Life cannot be lived without expectation. Now, what do we really mean by expectation? That is the question. Because within expectation there is planning. As Dale has said, if you want to go on a journey, you've got to plan your route. And by planning your route, it would imply that you expect to reach New York if you are going to New York. Good. Now, if we are bound on the mundane level by expectation, how should expectation be handled? Hmm? I reach home and I expect to have a warm meal, hmm? which is quite natural after a hard day's work, a lovely smile from the wifey, or whatever the case might be. It is expected. Hmm? But that is not the kind of expectation we are talking about. These little expectations are the things that make the world run. But in the expectation, the quality that is required, the quality which would not bind you, would be non-attachment. Now you, the man, goes home after a hard day's work and he expects to have a meal. Now something might have happened that day and little wife, he was busy with the children or the child was not well or whatever the case might be and she could not prepare that meal that you had expected. Now, if you were totally attached that you must have that hot meal, if you were totally attached to that idea, then you would feel disappointment. But if you were not attached to the idea contained within the expectation, then disappointment will not be there. You cannot live a life free of expectation, that that kind of freedom comes at a far later stage when you are just about to merge away into the divine and then also you do not expect the emergence. Hmm? For even expecting the emergence with divinity hmm, is also a form of attachment an attachment to the idea. Now, what do we mean by idea? I. 
that's the main letter in the word idea because that very I forms the idea who else forms it in your mind but that very ego I so here is the factor where the ego becomes more and more refined through spiritual practices and that and in that refinement although expectation is there you can never be disappointed or hurt hmm? a young lady becomes pregnant good now I spoke to one this morning I said what do you want boy or girl she says anything now isn't that beautiful tell me now if you expect oh I want a boy I want a boy and a girl comes you feel disappointed you are expecting you can expect the child <laughs> yeah but boy or girl so far it is the child you're expecting you're not expecting the boy or girl huh you see the idea that formulates in the mind could become very constructive and could become very destructive it could become a source of great satisfaction or it could become a source of great dissatisfaction depending how we use the idea that has arisen in the mind now what is an idea an idea is a thought that's all what it is and all thoughts are formulated mm -hmm. they just don't jump upon you from kingdom come they are formulated by the patternings of our mind for example among the Indian people they always like their first child to be a boy because the daughter gets married and goes away to the husband's home while the boy stays at home and brings his wife home that is the traditional Hindu way so is it not a matter of total selfishness expecting the child to be a boy so that he will provide for me when I grow old look at the selfishness okay. so this has an entire traditional influence upon the mind so there are traditional influences there are cultural influences there are environmental influences that helps us formulate certain ideas hmm? now when we measure our lives we also have to measure our ideas because life itself is an idea hmm? the kind of life we are living now do not confuse life with life force because life force is independent of the idea of life so in the formulation of idea which is definitely patterned as I said by tradition culture and environment and if we find that the idea is not conducive to our happiness or not conducive or not running with the flow of nature then here the effort comes in that we change the idea that we say I expect a good meal when I reach home but if I reach home and if there is not that good meal, so what? We go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to learn of American culture. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? 
You see, so there can be no disappointment. Hmm? There can be no disappointment. Because disappointments have appointments. Yes. Yes, with every disappointment, you are having an appointment with your destiny. Hmm? Now, to avoid the disappointments and yet have expectations is possible. Now, this is not a contradiction of terms. But it is an extension of the expectation. So if the expectation, although it is there, and if it is viewed in a manner that would produce greater and greater happiness, then by all means expect. We come to this course. And we expect, very rightfully, that we would feel uplifted. We would gain something, some understanding, the mutual friendship, the atmosphere, being with your Guru, all the love that pervades all around us. We expect that, don't we? Yeah. So that is the idea we come with to a cause. Right. But, for example, if a person does not feel well, then it is not the fault of the cause. It's the person of the person, it's the fault of the person not feeling well. Hmm? For that person might have come with so many, many burdens and would just not allow himself or herself to open themselves to receive the love and the beautiful vibrations that permeate this form. So always, always, always do remember that in every disappointment nothing else is involved all externalities can have no effect at all if we have that strength within. And that is what we teach. Strength and hope and courage. Let all calamities come. And by facing them, the calamities dwindle away. We need that strength. We need to strengthen ourselves in such a way that, come what may, I accept it. I accept the responsibility of what comes my way. And I will do something about it. You see? So, expectation can be used, as I said, in a constructive or a destructive way, depending how much you are attached to the expectation. Hmm? Now, planning is necessary. Hmm? You plan to drive from here to San Francisco, hmm? and you're not going to drive expecting having a puncture. Hmm? or having the car breaking down. You are not going to do that. For then the drive would be so unenjoyable. Because what would loom in your mind is the thought of the puncture or the breakdown and not the beautiful scenery that you are passing. So the journey of life becomes a living hell instead of a living heaven. And yet we expect to reach San Francisco. But what is the idea in the mind? The punch and the breakdown or the beautiful scenery on the way? 
actually realize the secret behind expectation where the idea has to be such and this requires a little effort this requires a little effort and with that little effort with that little positive thought the one can definitely and truly and in reality change one's entire patterning of thought which is another word for expectation hmm? because thought is the main constituent in expectation hmm? people that do not expect in this practical daily life would be people without any mind they should be in a lunatic asylum yeah that happens they become mindless hmm? in the yogic state of trance you can become mindless but you can never remain there all the time you have to come down to earth hmm? as a matter of fact you can never remain with God all the time hmm? you have to come down to earth and regard this earth to be God also hmm? not up there in the clouds ah, as the saying goes feet firmly planted on the ground and the head in the air hmm? so here you combine hmm? the heavens with the earth that's the symbolism of the cross the vertical leading to the heaven on which is joined the horizontal of the earth and it requires the earth hmm? the horizontal requires the support of the vertical or the horizontal cannot remain and that is what life is all about is to combine within ourselves earthly values real living values to live as ordinary human beings with all our faults and frailties hmm? for who is so perfect in this world I'm not perfect hmm? and why look for perfection did Christ not say cast the first stone he that is perfect hmm? was Christ perfect I'm talking of Jesus sorry not Christ because Christ is a consciousness that's a different thing was Jesus perfect hmm? when he used to visit the inns and dine with the Pharisees and hmm? and his gracious disciple which very few people know was Mary was to be a known prostitute hmm? was Jesus the man perfect but the consciousness he had that was perfect and that he left to us for us that is our heritage not the man but his consciousness and this applies to Krishna Moses Buddha Mahavir all of them because the same consciousness permeating eternally beginless and endless and just rising up in the ocean as the big tidal wave whenever it is necessary so in the true idea of expectation one must be fearless come what may there was a samurai warrior and he was known to be the greatest warrior in those times good he came home after a great battle and he had won the battle and slain all his enemies he came home he sat down and rested and there in front of him stood a little mouse and this mouse was a brave mouse I don't know if he came from Disneyland <laughs> mighty mouse hmm? so this mouse stood there and stared at him just stood there and stared at him 
This samurai warrior was sitting and looking at this mouse and he thought, I, the great warrior that I have conquered this and that and the other, and here this mouse dares to sit in front of me and stare at me. Hmm? So he took out his sword and every time he slashed at the mouse, the mouse jumped. Hmm? And he tried again and again and again, knocking, 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 until he hit the stone floor so hard that his sword broke. Hmm? His sword broke and he broke inside him. For a little mouse conquered him. Hmm? A little worries conquer us. Hmm? Right. So then he went out to his next door neighbor. And says to the neighbor, look, this little mouse has beaten me, the invincible, unbeatable. What must I do? So the neighbor says, get a cat. <laughs> so he got a cat. Right. So this mighty mouse as soon as the cat came in, attacked the cat. Hmm? And the cat got so afraid that it ran away. You see, what ran away? Why did the cat run away? Why was his samurai a failure there? Because of his fear. Because of his fear. That this little mouse stands there and stares at me. So he felt fearful. Hmm? So he lost. The cat lost. But this little mouse attacks me. Mice are supposed to run away when the cat comes. Hmm? It attacked me. So the cat fell fearful and ran away. So then he went to the neighbor again. Now what to do? Hmm? So the neighbor says, You know, we should get the royal cat. So he went to the palace, this warrior, and being a great warrior, the king honored him and says, what can I do for you? He says, look, I want to have the loan of the royal cat. So he brought the royal cat along to his home. You know, and the cat was conscious that I am a royal cat. And as soon as the cat came in, he devoured the mouse. What devoured the mass? The strength, the fearlessness. Although the royal cat was a frail cat, but it had the confidence that I am the royal, the Raj cat. Hmm? You see. So having that confidence, have all the expectations that I am potentially divine and within my expectations being of divine nature no disappointment can befall me. See how practical it is. Hmm? There again we come to the attitude of life. I think that is the theme this week, isn't it? Yeah. So, as we proceed through life, with all the expectations, fine, hmm? but be not attached to the expectation and no disappointment can befall. Hmm? No disappointment. And then the result is joy when there's no disappointment. And then you really fulfill your appointment with destiny and what is destiny is to know one's inner self. Therefore the Bible keeps on saying, man know thyself hmm? and knowing thyself as man includes all the opposites hmm? for life can only exist here by means of polarities. There has to be contraction and expansion 
without expansion there is no contraction without contraction there can be no expansion so when we say that we live with expectations and not attached to expectations we automatically arise beyond the polarities beyond pain and pleasure we rise above it and find that equilibrium and within that equilibrium you function the waters have become stilled and you swim in the still transparent beautiful water that's what we are doing we are swimming in the in this world that is called life hmm? you say so <coughs> when the question is said that it is difficult to get away from expectations hmm? true it is difficult hmm? you have to become a saint and then even the saint has expectations to a limited very refined degree for man cannot exist without even the highest enlightened man still has that little trace of ego he has to have it otherwise he could never exist in a mortal frame but the ego being so refined that all the light of divinity shines through clearly and the light is so bright but when it shines through the pane of glass which is the ego the glass seems to have disappeared and only the light is seen for the light is so powerful the ego can not be destroyed it is a total fallacy that has been preached by many philosophies that annihilate your ego it is impossible the ego can not be annihilated for nothing in this universe is destructible nothing can be destroyed i've said many times that you could never add a single ounce of energy into this universe and you can never take away a single ounce of energy it is a complete whole beginless and endless eternal all the time so the ego cannot be annihilated at all and when man reaches enlightenment he still has the trace of ego mm. and when he leaves the mortal frame at will if he wishes to then that very refined ego disintegrates and goes back into its original elements mm. and that's the meaning of earth to earth dust to dust in a very gross form but in its refined form this is what it means that the ego disintegrates and its forces and energies contained therein goes back to its original elements so nothing is destructible nothing is destructible it all goes with you when this body is shed even your expectations go with you hmm? there is the islam faith for example <clears throat> they maintain that here on earth you must not have a drink and if you do have a drink uh, they don't supposed to not at all of course our teaching is just do things in moderation what's wrong with it you know, why wait till the year after islam promises that when you pass away you will 
have rivers of wine flowing. You will have Houris, celestial pretty women, Houris, tending to you. You'll be living in the most fabulous palaces and all that if you live a certain kind of good life here of total abstinence. Now, this was put forth for a definite psychological region, uh, reason in this particular theology. The reason was this, that they wanted to establish an Islamic empire. And to establish the Islamic empire, they did not want people's energies to be dissipated in wine, woman and song. They wanted all the energies concentrated in those so-called holy wars to gain dominion. Therefore, for example, Islam ruled Spain, the greater part of Spain, for over 1100 years. Okay. There was a psychological factor involved in there. So, many of these theologies have been filled with various kinds of motives. So, they promise that if you do this, then on the other side you can expect to have all the huris and the rivers of wine flowing and all the pleasures, mundane pleasures you can think of. They give you that expectation. Now I will tell you one thing today, which is a totally new proposition. They always maintain that when you pass away, you can take nothing with you except the impressions you have gained in this life, except the totality of the impressions of the experiences you have gained in this life. But I want to propose a new thought to you that when you pass away, you can take this chair with you. You can take your house with you. Yes, you can. Now this would sound a bit surprising. <laughs> now I'll tell you how it works. Huh? I'll tell you how it works. You are so attached to that Louis XIV chair. You are so attached to your motor car. That you can take with too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You are so attached to your home and your belongings and what have you, you name it. Hmm? And you take them away with you because your attachment is so much to your possessions hmm? that you expect to take it away with you. And because of that deep attachment, because of the deep power of thought, when your subtle body goes into a different dimension, your very thoughts will materialize your house and all your possessions there for you. And you will find it real. I've experienced it. I've made experiments. And I'm telling you this. You'll find it real. Hmm? You will find it real as a person finds it real in a dream. For while you are dreaming, is everything not real? Hmm? Is everything not real while you are dreaming? But then, before reincarnating, you wake up and then you realize that this was a dream of the subtle body. You see? So you can take everything with. Hmm? So.
sir. But what is it going to produce? You're still going to be there in that attachment and the sufferings that has been caused in the physical body here will only be amplified ten times more in the subtle body for the subtle body is more ten times more a hundred times more sensitive hmm? so the attachments will become ten times more hmm? and if attachment brings about suffering here, then that suffering will be ten times more there. So I do not advise anyone to take anything with him. <laughs> <laughs> the tricks which the mind can play. I said the other day that the mind is as vast as this universe. For the mind is the universe. And what you can do is place X amount of energy from here and move it to there. That is all that is happening. This universe is functioning only because of the movement of energies. So it is very easy to move these energies from here to another dimension. Hmm? But is that the path to spiritual unfoldment? Is that the path to divinity? No, no, no. no. Hmm? People try to enjoy both worlds all the time. Hmm? And it is possible to do that. Enjoy the relative and the absolute. But what is missing? is the combination of the two, the interpenetration of the two, that is missing. The two are regarded to be apart. That this is the world and that is earth and that is the heaven. But when we through our spiritual practices and the teachings, the philosophies start to realize that both interpenetrates, then we bring heaven on earth, thy kingdom come. You see, we, we say these things every day, but we don't realize the deeper implications or the depth of meaning contained therein. Thy kingdom come. Hmm? Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm? What a great prayer. Hmm? What a great prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Hmm? What does that mean? It talks of none expectation. Give us this day, this day, our daily bread. Hmm? not tomorrow's bread. I don't want it today, it'll get stale. That is very true. In all aspects of life, if you live in the tomorrow, and then when you reach tomorrow, hmm, it is stale. So give us this day our daily bread. That's all we ask, and that means none expectation of the future. Now that does not mean you sit down and do nothing, and that you don't plan there has to be some outline. Hmm? The student goes to college, he has to have an outline of what causes he is going to do. These are little practical things and that planning has nothing to do with expectation. The expectation has to do if he, if he wants to pass, he expects to pass. Good, good. But is he working? Is he studying? Hmm? Is he really studying and grasping? Hmm? Is he really studying and grasping the lessons at college? Then 
He does not even need to expect to pass. He will naturally pass. Hmm? So planning, proper planning, can do away with expectation. Hmm? I give my son education. Hmm? I do not expect him to look after me in my old age. What I am doing is just this. I am doing what has been done to me. My parents brought me up and gave me education, so I am returning that to my children. I am repaying that debt to my parents by giving it to my children. And that is how the world goes on. That is how it should go on without that kind of attached expectation, with that kind of qualified expectation. So, non-attached, unattached expectation is the secret of happiness. Boy loves girl, and she expects him to love her, to reciprocate that love. Hmm? But if he doesn't, he finds a better girl perhaps, hmm? then she feels disappointed. Hmm? It is expected. Hmm? Maybe she is attached and dependent, emotionally dependent perhaps, or some other kind of dependency, physical dependency. Hmm? If that was not there in the first place, disappointment will not come. And as we said this morning, that the real love knows of no attachment. It knows only of acceptance. Not only acceptance of the person, but the acceptance of whatever result it brings. We want to create results. Hmm? But I want this to be the result. And that is where disappointment comes from. And this is where we negate all our religions. We throw all our religions to the sea when we do that. For is the spirit of religion not this, but not my will? Thy will be done. Who am I to expect? Who am I to order? Hmm? Who am I to order? The planning is necessary. Effort is necessary to have proper effort. The spiritual practices are necessary. The remembrance of divinity or his representative is necessary to bring that grace to you so that your plans are fulfilled even without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. That means that we are surrendering. Mm -hmm. We are offering ourselves to that which is greater than ourselves. Hmm? What right have you to expect? What right have you to demand? Hmm? Even our prayers are filled with expectations and demands from God. Does He not know your needs? Who are you to demand? Who am I to demand? Hmm? We expect nothing. We expect nothing. We act for the sake of acting. We work for the sake of working. Hmm? We love for the sake of loving. Hmm? And whatever result it brings, that too we accept. And we accept this gracefully. For whatever is given to us is given with grace, by grace. So why not accept 
our position in life today as it is start now that is the time to start not tomorrow tomorrow never comes and yesterday's of god we start here and now we expect nothing and then living becomes a joy because the same expectations your mind is forever swirling and swirling and swirling you buy a block of shares and you expect the price to rise you put 10 dollars on a horse that's running on monday wine is not it monday tuesday whenever hmm? but your mind is swirling here and from now already you're expecting my horse is going to win my shares are going to go up in price hmm? so you are not living now you are living for next tuesday or next saturday you are not living now you are not enjoying the benefits of the now your mind is there somewhere in the future which might never come hmm? so look at all the disadvantages hmm? so if you put 10 dollars in us to get it hmm? i don't advocate raising of course oh, but i'm using these analogies and analogies are never perfect hmm? yeah but do not let the mind dwell on it over time are oh, rushing to the new sand and see what the index says of the shares mm. has risen has gone down has risen mm. Mm. unnecessary expectation unnecessary first you should not dabble in those shares yeah Or, or take a flat on the right hmm? but never if you do that hmm? and use it just as fun hmm? you got so so you earn 500 dollars a week and then um, so you spend 20 dollars on that hmm? nothing wrong to have a few little vices it makes life interesting <laughs> yeah yeah but they must not be vices that are harmful to yourself or to others hmm? even all the presidents have vices <laughs> yes vice presidents of course <laughs> <clears throat> that is the secret of happiness have no expectations but do not be attached to it hmm? and do not give you put your 10 dollars on a horse do not expect it to win hmm? uh, you do expect it to win of course but do not be attached to it hmm? do not be attached to it and then you will not feel disappointed Okay. Oh, we can have another short question. Yeah, let's go to them. Don't we break up at nine? Oh, dear me. Good, good. There's another meeting tonight, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Okay, then we'll call it tonight. And we are the start of whatever meeting we have. He was not certain scheduled. Yeah. 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 Yeah.